Breakfast with the Beatles on 93XRT. I'm Terry Hemmert. Her voice, charm, humor, and not to mention her great taste and knowledge of music have filled Chicago's airwaves for decades. Terry Hemmert is celebrating 50 years at Chicago's very own WXRT Radio. And although she may not originally be from Chicago, Chicago, of course, would not be the same without her. So Terry Hemmert joining us now ahead of her big anniversary celebration tomorrow morning. Terry, good morning to you. Thank you for joining us. How you feeling? Tired. <laughs> it's tired. exhausting being some, doing something for 50 years, but I feel great and I'm okay. uh, very excited to see a lot of friends and celebrate and, and be here with you, Jackie. Thanks. Absolutely. Well, you were the first female drive time host for a rock music station here in Chicago. So what's oh, it like to look back and reflect anywhere. on? <laughs> yeah, OK, anywhere. That's even yeah. bigger. So what's it like to reflect back on? you know, earning that position and be spending, you know, spending 50 years in it. Well, they put a sign up in the window that said women need not apply for radio and, wow. and even television back then. But I was just bound and determined to get in there because I wanted to meet the Beatles. And that was my plan to get to be a disc jockey and interview them. And uh, it, well, I got halfway there. I got to meet Paul many times in Ringo, and I got to meet a million great listeners and a lot of other rock stars and to work with a terrific group of, of people at XRT for, well, they haven't been there 50 years, but I've been seeing them coming through. And, <laughs> but anyway, that's cool. Is there any memory that stands out aside from uh, the Beatles memory? Oh, just... Uh, well, we've had a lot of fun, of course. When you get around rock and roll music, you have a lot of fun. But I think one of the most incredible days was 9-11, when Lynn Bramer and I were on. Uh, we're, we were about to end his shift and begin mine. And um, all you know what was uh, going on. And, and uh, we had to soldier our way through that with no warning. So, And you being in the media, you know how that's pretty... Um, intense, but I've had a lot of fun with listeners. I've gone to Cubs games with them. I've gone to concerts with them. I feel like I know them. And I also been teaching at Columbia College for 48 years. So I've got all these former students floating around town that I keep bumping into. And I love that. Terry, did the experience of um, going through 9-11 on the air change your perspective on what you do every morning and the value and the role that you play in people's lives to at least have yeah. a platform sometimes to, to not only unite but but maybe lift their spirits in an appropriate time right well i've been aware of that for a long time especially when i was on the morning after john lennon was shot mm. um, that was intense and uh and I, I know that's a part of the deal. And and one of the things I love about radio is the intimacy, how I feel like I know them. People come up and say, I feel like I know you. And I feel like I know them too, because we've been through a lot together and we share our passion for music. Speaking of music too, tonight I'm doing my classic encounter thing at the Chicago Symphony Orchestra. So working at XRT has given me all these channels where I can go off and do other things too. That keeps it interesting. I never, I've never been bored the whole 50 years. <laughs> You've never I'm been bored, bored but not bored. <laughs> and that's saying something, man. That is, that's really something to be grateful for because I don't think a lot of people get to go through life feeling that way about what they do. Yeah, and it was a dream. I mean, I was a 15-year-old kid. Beatles had been around for a year. It was 1965. I was reading a teenage magazine in study hall, and it had a picture of disc jockey Jim Stagg interviewing Ringo Starr, and the, the light went off over my head, and I thought, if I get to be a disc jockey, I can meet the Beatles. And it worked. And I got to meet Jim Stagg, too. So was, he was on WCFL back then, and he, he was a great guy. Did the experience of getting to live your dream live up to the daydream of it? Yes, it did. You know, and people say, don't meet your heroes because you'll be disappointed. I beg to differ. I've met some remarkable people. I remember talking heads first time they came to town. Uh, we hung out and got to be buddies. And Patti Smith, I've interviewed her a million times. We like we're old friends. It's just and, it, and I don't presume that they act like it. It's just it's just great. And Bob Marley hanging out with Bob Marley. Whew. And all the blues artists I've known, Coco Taylor, Mavis Staples, and I've known the Staples singers, getting to know the, all the Chicago musicians, Muddy Waters, all the, you know, 
it's just been a thrill to meet my heroes and to make new heroes all the time too. Oh, a legend alongside so many legends. Terry, you are a legend. Well, Talk one about in Chicago is a great selfish. city for that. Well, you of know? course, of course. Talk it's, about I've, your... I've fallen in love with Chicago. I grew up in a town of 20,000 people in Ohio, and now I live in the greatest city in the world, and I'll, I'll never get tired of this city. I'm not going to a warmer climate. Uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. We like the the uh, the grit that is built by dealing with Chicago weather. <laughs> it builds character, yes. It certainly does. It is true. Terry, talk about your celebration tomorrow. Uh, explain for, for yeah. viewers and fans of yours what all is going into that celebration. Oh, well, I don't even know. Every time I ask, they go, none of your business. But I do know <laughs> starting at 8 o'clock, I'll show up. Marty Leonard's is doing morning. And uh, and I'm very excited about that because Marty was one of my students. And back in 1981, when I was supposed to do the morning show for four weeks, I needed a producer and I got him out of class. And I said, can you do it? I can't pay you, but I can buy you breakfast and pick you up and give you a ride and get you concert <laughs> tickets and free records. And, and he did it. And that was January of 81. And he's still there. And now he's on the morning. I'm very proud of him. And then uh, later on, Annalisa, who is on in middays now, where I used to be, and uh, she's going to have me on a show for a while. And then uh, we're just going to, like, I don't know, close the place tonight. <laughs> we'll be hanging out, people coming and going, and I don't know who's coming. It's kind of scary. <laughs> but I'm really looking forward to seeing all my old friends. It'll be like a high school reunion, you know, <laughs> but fun. <laughs> I love it. The kind of high school reunion that you actually want to go to, right? <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. But okay. I'm very grateful for the opportunity to, you know, make my dream. I told Ringo a couple of years ago, I said, you gave me my dream and it came true. And so anytime yeah. any class school, I don't care if it's grade school or college, they say, will you come and talk to the kids about following your dream? Yes. And I do. And they get energized because everybody gets, I can't tell you how many people have told me, don't even try. You can't make it. You're a woman. You're not going to blah, blah, blah. And if I'd listen to that, I don't know what I'd be doing right now. I'd probably be sitting and drinking a pina colada in Florida or something. I don't know. But, uh, you know, and, and, and sometimes with the dreams, you get something else on the way that you wouldn't have gotten if you hadn't pursued that dream. And in my case, I got my dream, but I got so much more. I thought maybe I'd be a DJ till 30 and then I'd have to find another career because you didn't have old DJs back then. But now uh, age equals wisdom. And they know it. And our audience is... You know, some people have been with me all 50 years. Some of them are really young and just got into it. Some of them, they took my class and now they listen. And I like reaching all the different generations because the music really does connect us. Terry, you uniform. are making me tear up this morning with all of your, your wisdom and your stories. I got to get this one last question in uh, for one of my producers who needs to know. But we've talked a little bit about uh, how you got into radio because of your deep love for the Beatles, eventually getting to meet Paul and Ringo. So today, the long-awaited final Beatles song has been released featuring all four members using some AI-assisted software. So what are your thoughts on the song? I think they're right behind you, right? Uh, yeah, they are. Yeah, I had this. I had to teach at Columbia by Zoom during COVID. So I thought this was really a great COVID picture. I just left it up. I love it. <laughs> Thanks. And they're always, you know, they're on my shoulder. I love them. They're always behind me. Got my back. Um, yeah, I'm real excited about it. It's the last Beatles single. It's the last opportunity. But I think Ringo and Paul have been just amazing. Uh, keeping the dream alive and spreading. Uh, well, Ringo once said, as he was, you know, getting older and realized the, the, the sand going through the hourglass is you know, thinning out. He said he wanted to dedicate the rest of his life to peace and love. And that's what they brought us back in 1964. And they continue to do that now. And they're great role models. I love them. I feel like you've done the same, Terry. Well, thanks. thanks. Peace and love. Peace and love. Uh, Terry Hemmer, thank you so much for joining us this well, morning. Thank you, Jackie. Congratulations. It was an absolute pleasure. Legend at Chicago's very own WXRT for 50 years. You can catch Terry Hemmert and a Peace celebration tomorrow. Peace and love. Peace and love. That's what it's all about.